Hey everybody, welcome to Ron Line Report. Today's guest, you know him very well. He is the giant killer Sean Clarita, recently became the Olympia 212 champion. Please welcome, all the way from New Jersey, I believe, yes? Sean Clarita. What's up, Sean? That's what's going on, Ron. Yeah. So, uh, the big question is, what's the yeah. first thing you ate once you could eat whatever you wanted? Unfortunately, it was the only thing that was open in Orlando at 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A pancakes that I have. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, that's I, that was my only gripe about Orlando. You know, there wasn't a lot to eat. You had you had to drive. You had to you had to drive a little ways to find stuff because we're yeah. out at like a, a convention center, so people aren't like looking to go. I guess they weren't go look, looking to eat. Most of the people aren't to go there, but uh, yeah. How many how many of my cookie dealer cookies did you get to have that weekend? Ooh, that weekend. <laughs> Actually, Juan had sent me some, so I had like a whole box in my room stashed. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> when you did your superstar seminar the morning, the Sunday after you won. They had two big boxes outside the room. I know. They must, they must have been like 500 cookies there. When I got there, I grabbed a couple. And then when I went to the bathroom to grab a couple more, they were almost all gone. Like, man, those, everybody's backpacks were loaded with those things. Yeah. But uh, all right, enough about cookies and pancakes, man. Congratulations. Uh, I'm not going to be one of those people that says, I knew you could do it all along, Sean, because I'll be honest with you. Up until last year when you took third, if anyone had ever thrown your name out there as a 212 Olympia champ, I'd be like, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. You weren't big enough. You just weren't big enough. But, you know, <laughs> the story of your career has been bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, steady, steady you, every year. Even Bob Chick in the seminar, you know, he asked you about that because we always talk about Dexter because Dexter's first show, I think he was like 140 pounds or something. Yeah, he's like 120 something. He was small too. 120. Okay, so he went from that to probably 230s. I'm guessing Dexter at his biggest was. You were 118 pounds, and um, I like to use your weigh-in weight it was 183. I know you dried out, you lost water, but let's yeah. go with the highest weight. You weighed in at 183 pounds, and that's yeah. do the math, guys. What's that like? Uh, 75 wow. pounds. <laughs> Seventy-five pounds on your frame—that would be like Rami putting on another one hundred and fifty pounds. You know, it's it's, it's crazy. So uh, I have to ask you, who believed in you all along? Because I know it can't be a long list of people. Who in your life really did stand by you and knew you could do it when everyone else was like, "Nah, this Sean Clear guy, I don't think so." I uh, weren't too many, man. That's why I keep my circle very small now. Um, you know, since I start started started competing, I lost a lot of friends. A lot of my family members, uh, people just didn't, you know, they weren't on board with what I was doing, didn't mm -hmm. support my, my, my journey. And um, that's why today I keep my circle very small. Um, obviously, my girlfriend and my coaches, uh, my sponsors, uh, they've been on board with me this whole time, believing in me, investing in me, and, and definitely knowing that I get to this point eventually. And, uh, and here we are. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, this is crazy because. It's a, it's a good parallel to look at what you've done. New York Pro and Olympia, you had almost the same trajectory. Yeah. 2015, well, let me go through the New York Pro first because it's they're both, I like to see it when people do better and better every time. It's not like 15th place, 3rd place, 11th place. You didn't. You kept going steadily upward. Yep. New York Pro, you did it for the first time in 2015, 7th place. Next year, you went all the way up to 3rd place. 2017, the year Sergio won the Open, you got 2nd place. And then 2018, you finally won it. So three, two, one—the last three times. That's pretty. That's pretty insane. Um, I can't even remember who took who, who who won it in 17. Um, what's his name? What's wow. it, Zane? Zane Watson? It was. No. Uh, I got his name completely went blank. Ronnie Raquel. Okay. Yeah, whatever happened to Ronnie Raquel? Huh. Interesting. We don't know. But uh, let's go to the Olympia. Olympia was even more impressive because your first Olympia. Uh, officially, it says did not place. So that was – were you outside top 15? Yeah, I was, like, last placed. Okay. I mean, everyone that's out, out of 15 is just 16. <laughs> Came back the next year, 2016, 13th place. Broke the top. You made the cut, as we say. 2017, ninth place. Now you're in the top 10. 2018, you're slowly moving up, seventh place. Last year was the big – I consider last year the breakout year for you. Yeah. You know, not to the caliber that this was. But once you got third place – we had people not only saying that you could win it, there were people that thought last year you should have won it. Yeah. So take me back. I know it's been a year and a half now, but what were people saying back then? Because that year it was Kamal, Derek, and you. 
mm-hmm. and there was there could be arguments. You know, what were they saying? Why why they felt you probably deserved to win even that year? Um, I just brought the conditioning to where it needed to be. I just lacked the size that mm-hmm. Kamal and Derek had, and I knew that as well. Going back, looking at pictures and videos, I definitely I was 169 pounds last year. Um, so again, pretty light. But uh, after coming home last year, I was super motivated and hungry to get back into the gym and improve. And this year, we came in about eight pounds bigger this year. Uh, my entire physique just changed from top to bottom. Uh, we improved a lot of body parts, made things a lot rounder, fuller, thicker, denser. And um, we came in, like I said, eight pounds bigger. And then, you know, we were on stage at 177 Friday and uh, just a whole new package, a whole new look. Yeah. And, uh, conditioning was the biggest thing, I think, this year. My conditioning was definitely at an all-time high. Uh, with the new muscle we added, and uh, it definitely was able to carry me over. So when you say you brought up body parts, I don't recall anything lagging. You, I've always thought you had a very complete physique. I didn't. You're not one of those guys who are like, nah, he needs more back. Ah, he needs more legs. It was never. I never saw anything that really stuck out to me. What, what in your mind, or are you and your coach Matt? What, what were you guys focusing on that you thought needed to be better? Uh, my chest and my back for sure last year. Hmm. Uh, hmm. The back did a little bit more width, a little more thickness. And my chest just lacked the upper part. Like I look at Kamal's chest compared to mine. His is just much fuller. And much mm-hmm. rounder where mine is these are more work upper upper in the upper part of my chest yeah. um obviously again every year even though i i place well like even this year I'm, i got i won i still have areas i want to improve upon for next mm-hmm. year um chest my back still need more work i especially i want to get, like, get a little better um my hamstrings a little bit more drop from the side my calf can always use work um so again no matter if i'm winning or not i'm still gonna find areas to improve upon yeah. And, you know, I know we spoke about this in that interview we did that night in the, in the, uh, out in front of the, uh, the theater, but anytime someone makes big improvements and they, they report on, or you hear that somebody added five pounds, 10 pounds, immediately yeah. you're going to think, well, their gut, they must have a gut now. Their midsection must be getting thicker and wider. And, you know, I'm sure people always said you can't get any bigger or else your waist is, you're going to lose your shape. You're going to lose your lines. You, how long have you been hearing that for, since you were how big, since you were how heavy? Every year, man. Every year. I've been that i keep saying i'm what they say I'm, I'm blown out or whatever the case whatever the term is i'm just or maxed out yeah i'm not maxed out i know i know what i still am able to do i know my body my body frame i know i can hold i still got another five to ten more pounds i can put on um, hmm. while also keeping things in check meaning my lines my waist everything so as far as my core and my, my abs we train it every single morning after after our cardio um every single morning just hammering away leg raises um, cr- crunches, whatever the case may be. And the biggest thing for us was digestion. Um, yeah. Digestion was on point. Um, we only put in very minimal foods in my, in my stomach that worked best for me. Um, that's, the, that's what definitely helped out last year. So, you know, a lot of people think that these guts come from eating a ton, a ton of carbs in the off season. Do you eat a lot of carbs in the off season or do you limit it a little bit? Honestly, I don't eat a lot, I don't eat a lot period. Um, mm. off season, yeah, I'm not a big eater. Um, but again, I... I, I have to eat, obviously, to grow, right? So, but, you know, the biggest thing for us is we, we do things to make sure the stomach is in control. Again, aside from the exercise in the morning, the core work, you know, probiotics, things like that, digestive aids to kind of help bring up, bring up the food and things like that. Yeah, because you know, it's funny you mentioned digestion. We're starting to hear more and more conversations about that. Whereas a few years ago, I don't remember anyone ever even mentioning digestion. It's like, man, eh, we're eating. It's going to get digested. We just assumed everything was fine. But meanwhile, we're all walking around feeling bloated, gassy, you know, either alternating between constipated and diarrhea, you know, a lot of body blows out there for many, many years. And even now, I don't think we're digesting very well at all, but we don't, we don't really do anything about it. So probiotics, digestive enzymes, anything else, apple cider vinegar, anything else that you've been using? No, those are the two main things I've been doing. And just obviously just very lean protein. I don't eat a ton of protein. Uh, keep that to a minimum and then the carbs obviously do vary and again for me I think what plays a big part for me is I don't do various types of foods uh, my food list is very small and I stick to the stuff the items that work best for me particularly well, what are those foods I'm curious what does the giant killer live on uh, white rice um, rice cakes uh, beef uh, fish and turkey that's it oh, okay yeah I mean, <laughs> why, why mess it up <laughs> That must so that makes it very simple when you diet, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. There's no having the second guess. Um, we've tried different things and we just find out certain things like don't work for my body. Like steak is obviously one of the main things that a lot of bodybuilders eat. I personally can't digest it at all. Um, mm. we don't do it at all. We do a lot of ground beef. Um, so you just gotta find out what's best for you. 
Yeah. I mean, Lee Haney many times was talking to me. He doesn't believe any bodybuilder should be eating. I think he, I don't think he thinks humans should be eating beef, period. Because yeah. he, he, he thinks it takes something like 24 hours to fully digest beef. It's so slow digest. Yeah, I don't know if that, that sounds a little ridiculous, but yeah, um, it, it's it's cool that you found a very, very limited amount of food because it seems like a lot of bodybuilders a diet. I, do you prep people also? No, no. Okay, because a lot of people, anyone out there who's a coach or has coached people knows that the vast majority of these amateur competitors, and I'm sure even some pros, they want this crazy variety of food every day, even when they're dieting and everything has to be delicious, has to be like a gourmet meal. Whereas, you know, you could probably eat like a what, a plain chicken breast and a bowl of rice and you're not going to complain that it wasn't tasty, right? I've eaten frozen fish and frozen rice before. Oh, frozen, frozen. Frozen. Like, wow, I, like just chewing on <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> I'm not there for taste, I'm there for view, that's all. Yeah, you win. Talk, <laughs> talk to me a little about the training because anyone that's on your Instagram, it's, it's, just, it's just your name, Sean Clarita, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Sean, there's, there's all kinds of trip clips on your instagram with crazy crazy weights yeah. um first of all how heavy do you get in the off season um last year i got to my heaviest for this prep i got to 200 pounds okay so i want to put i want to put that out there to put this all in perspective because you're a 200 pound guy so some of these weights even if you were 300 pounds i think people would be like wow so what are some of the what are some of the top weights you were hitting in the and i know even you stayed strong up until the very end too even during prep I, which is crazy but uh, what are some of the top weights you hit these past few months? Um, I stuck with all the basic compound movements. Um, I can squat 515 for reps at six. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can dumbbell press the 150s, 160s for reps. Hmm. Uh, I incline 405 with barbell. Uh, um, More than double your body weight, by the way, that is, people. Yeah. <laughs> Leg press, 1,300, 1,400 pounds. Um, so, I mean, I'm just a pretty strong guy, guys, when it comes to, to training. That's what I... That's what works best for my body. And like you said, I did it from start to finish. Even last week in Orlando, we were still, up until Wednesday, still going pretty heavy and still pretty hard. Um, and obviously, Matt had to kind of calm me down a little bit toward the end. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that, that's what works best for my body. That's how my body responds personally. And a lot of guys don't realize, too, that training that way is what obviously maintains and keeps that muscle on, but also what gives you that hard granite look on stage. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you been called is it only giles that calls you mini ronnie coleman or is that caught on with more people seems like the whole world is starting to yeah. so because <laughs> if if you talk to ronnie he's always saying that he had that look that he had that the other guys didn't have that real dense density of the muscles from very very heavy training with basic basic movements you know because we were talking the other day I don't, if you caught it or not he was talking about rami and he says rami's the same probably the same size that, that Ronnie, that Ronnie Coleman was in his prime, but the muscles don't have really the same look because, you know, I'm sure Ron, Ronnie trains very hard and he, he's just not a weak guy. I'm sure he's strong and everything, but Ronnie Coleman was, come on, Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. We saw this guy do things with so much, so much heavy free weight. It was just astounding and so motivating. Um, I it's interesting. It's, it's yeah. a look. You could tell when a guy trains hard and heavy versus a guy who trains you know, with cables and machines. So I think, like I said, it's a different look completely. Yeah. And another thing is your muscles have this, I know it's a genetic component, but very few bodybuilders, even at your level, have that real round fullness to the muscle that you do. Uh, right. I can only really think of a couple guys out there right now, Phil Heath, assuming he's still competing, Roly Winkler, you, and can you even think of anybody else that's still competing? Still competing? Uh when I, when, I, when I think about that, I think about the Flex Wheeler days, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> I think Flex, had, Flex is like the poster board for that look, obviously. I think yeah. Levroni, Levroni was very similar. He had the round, full look to his muscles. But it's, you know, it's crazy that we don't see more of it, considering there's 8 or 9 billion people in the world. You'd yeah. think we'd be seeing more of it. But, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I can steal it for this. I'll try to. But, you know, Matt Jansen took a video backstage of you pumping up with the, uh, with the bands. Yeah. Just sitting there doing curls, and you would have sworn it was completely Photoshop, but it was just, it wasn't. It was a video off his phone with crappy backstage lighting. But man, I mean, th that's where you really could see it on stage. Obviously, you see it too. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, video, that video blew up on Instagram. It literally is posted everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I saw it on a lot of different, you know, all those so and so motivation, J daily yeah. gym, whatever that. Everybody stole it. I'll steal it too. Uh, so I, I, I want to know what your mindset was going into Olympia because third place last year, 
very, very strong top three against, you know, Kamal, who's, geez, he was like the top amateur bodybuilder in the, in that part of the world for like over a decade. He won everything. Yeah. Derek, Derek Lunsford is no slouch, but you know, you're coming into the show knowing you're up against a reigning Mr. Olympia and the judging was actually pretty, really spot on at this last Olympia. I've been to many, many Olympias. I'm sure you've been to more than your share where the reigning champion was, was not at his best did not really deserve to keep his title, he or she. It's happened in all divisions, but they yeah. kept it anyway. This year, man, the judges had some, had some Tyler and the and company had some balls on them because, you know, Kamal. It's not like Kamal came in off. It's not like yeah. Kamal looked bad. He didn't. Kamal looked freaking great. Yeah. So I had my doubts even after judging when everyone's saying, Clarita, Clarita, Clarita. I said, yeah, he deserves to win. But I'm in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if they're gonna quote let him win. You know, yeah. what, what were you thinking? Honestly, uh, after prejudging, I just thought I was somewhere in the top four. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm never sure. I, I never want to be confident. I just kind of want to just wait till it's all said and done. Um, again, I knew I was in the top four. Obviously, I was in the middle. But again, you just don't know with the judges. Even yeah. if in the middle, you could be fourth place. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but we can night show just as tight, if not tighter, improved, drier, hungrier than ever. And then when I finally figured out it was I was in the top two, is when I noticed Kamal and I were just last two guys to the side. Mm. And obviously they brought us back out for the final pose down, and we just kind of just battled. It was just, I knew it was a close decision. I heard it was a one-point decision going into the finals. I heard he was up a little bit. But like I said, he was improved. And um, when it was all said and done, I really thought I was second, just because, like, like you said, he's a champ. Um, he's improved. He's better than he was last year. And I thought maybe I just didn't have enough to, to knock him out. Yeah. Um, and obviously the judges thought, thought otherwise. They, you know, obviously I got some feedback that I was very much improved. I, my posing was on point. I seemed like I wanted it more. Um, I think that's what kind of helped me out. And then obviously hearing, you know, and knew that I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. When Bob, when Bob says that, it's the crowd yeah. always goes electric because you're yeah. getting a new champ. And that's, like I said, for so long at the Olympia, we didn't have new champions. It would just be. I saw Ronnie win when he shouldn't have won. I saw Jay win when he shouldn't have won. I saw Dorian win a, sh a couple times when I wouldn't have had him win. You know, man, I could go on and on. But man, to to make to 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 make the right calls like that, it made us all feel. I, I felt so much better about the judging and the sport walking out of that weekend. Did you get that impression? There was a lot of new. I was like, I'm backstage hearing all the new champions being announced. I was like, wow. Yeah. And that's what that's what me and Matt kind of looked at each other like. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? You know, anything can happen now, you know, so. Yeah. And then we saw Brandon, who looked better than he did last year. Yes. Again, but Rami looked even better. Yeah. Rami had this confidence. He was doing air guitar during his routine. It was nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, when did it finally sink in? Because I, I know I've always talked to guys and they say it doesn't really feel real being the Olympia champion for a little while. How long did it take you to, to finally sit down and say, yeah, I, I am the Olympia champion? It really hasn't sunk in yet. Mm. I mean, I was talking to Flex Lewis another day after the show, and he told me uh, it's going to take some some time, and it's going to hit me at a, at a you know ordinary, a weird time and place. Um, just you know, for me, I'm just back to the gym, back to just being Sean, back to kind of doing my my normal life, and you know, obviously getting the attention that we're getting now with you know the calls or interviews, people coming up to the gym, taking pictures. It's great, it's a great feeling, but it still hasn't really sunken in for me personally that you know I'm the Olympia champ. Um, I still, obviously I see the medal and I see the award and everything, but it really hasn't really hit me yet. And, uh, I'm just kind of waiting for that moment, I guess. Huh. Hopefully it'll happen before you win it again. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, did you sleep? Were you able to get any sleep that night? I literally did not sleep. I, the show was over what Friday. I didn't yeah. sleep all Friday and I didn't, I probably slept a total of like four hours and three days. Wow. I, mean, I was just on adrenaline. After the show, I came back to the room after I hopped. Um, I literally didn't sleep at all. Um, and Matt, obviously, they all went to sleep. I, I got a call from Matt. Hey, you want to go to breakfast? And I'm like, I'm still up. So, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, I can only imagine it's the excitement of, of finally achieving something. Because what what year did you start training? Uh, 2004 bodybuilding, 2005. Yeah. Okay, so it's 15 years. You've probably been dreaming about being the Olympia champ. Yeah. Can we just call you the Mr. 212 Olympia? Why can't we have Mr. in there? Come on, guys. Mr. I, I use Mr. Olympia. I, mean, I don't yeah, know. Why, why not? I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, for I'm I'm so glad that they that they got rid of that showdown thing, man. That that's annoyed the crap out of me. 
I didn't like that. Uh, like, come on, everything else is the Olympian. They're the they're the showdown. Come on, guys. Yeah, I mean, not that actually. <laughs> You can have a bikini showdown or something. Leave the 212 guys, they're bodybuilders. They're, they should be called Olympia, this and that. Please. Uh, so, yeah, I'm interested to hear you're back in the gym all right. Did you take, did you take any time off training at all? Uh, well, we got back Monday. Um, I took the rest of that week off for the holiday. It was Christmas. And then I got right back to the gym that next Monday or Tuesday it was. So I trained for about three days. And then we had New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I took those two days off. Then I go right back after that. So I really haven't taken time off. Um, obviously, I'm not going 100 percent yet. I'm just kind of easing my way back into things. Uh, my body's still trying to catch up on sleep and just kind of just catch itself back to you know, normal. But um, I would say come February, we'll be full force and everything. Um, I got some travel coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'll be headed down to Texas with Gasp, doing some content with them. Um, so yeah, come February, man, we'll be back in the gym. I think the I think I think the Olympics will be September or December. I think yeah. now because the they, is- they, yeah, when they did they haven't announced the Olympia, but I'm pretty sure they they can't have it in September and the Arnold. They yeah. have to have they have to have a break between them, which is good because now we have the full year to kind of prepare for it. Uh, we weren't sure. We were a little, you know, we weren't sure if it's eight months or if it's a full year. If it's yeah. back in September, uh, but now we now we kind of know it's almost much a full year. So we'll be back next year, bigger, better, improved. Um, we're looking to keep these titles for as long as we possibly, you know, want it. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be tough to beat. Um, do you like Do you like Orlando better or Las Vegas better? Hmm. I think from a family aspect, Orlando is pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. People could bring their families and kind of hang out in Florida after. Um, I think it's better right now because Florida's open and Vegas. I don't want to have to deal with maybe, maybe not, or we're going to close down type of thing. And I think it's maybe a little cheaper in Orlando as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> And the venue was actually pretty nice. I mean, I didn't mind that venue. It was the huge stage. We had you know, the LEDs, the screens everywhere. Um, there wasn't a bad seat in the house whatsoever. Um, I think it was a, a good a good move. Yeah. I suspect just because they were so excited to have that Zappos Theater and everything, Planet Hollywood, I, we were all excited because, you know, the yeah. Orleans, let's face it, the Orleans was kind of dumpy, was way uh, off the strip. Did you ever try to walk from the Orleans to the strip? Oh, never. <laughs> okay, I, I did. It was like 90 degrees out, and I was regretting it very, very quickly, let me tell you. Because everything in Las Vegas looks like it's kind of close. You can, Oh, there's that casino over there. Yeah, An hour later, you still haven't reached it. You're like, oh, my God. It's like it's like a mirage. It keeps getting further and further away. But I, I'm cool with Orlando, man. Did, did you get to stay at all and do anything there? Uh, we had photo shoots and everything lined up for the next day. We stayed till Monday. Um, but, no, we didn't stay anything past that. We just kind of wanted to get home and get ready for the holidays. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, that that's the other thing is I don't know having it's if it was like right around Christmas, at least we had a little a few days to get ready for Christmas and New Year's and all that. I think if it was like Christmas week, people would be like, mm, I'm not going, I'm not going. I think it's gonna be the first week in December. Okay, yeah, that would make that would make good sense to me. So can't be, to, yeah, can't be November because of Thanksgiving. So. True, true. Yeah, who did I just talk to? George Peterson. He said they. They, I wish they would have it so we could celebrate Thanksgiving, like right before that. But man, eh, if you had to choose between not being able to eat at Thanksgiving and you know having to having to interfere with Christmas and New Year's, I think this is the way to go. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you can't you can't make everybody happy, obviously. But, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm curious about the training because you do train so heavy. Do you do you ever cycle down and train a little lighter at periods, or or is your body good? Your body's good with it. Wow. Okay. I get, the one thing that I've done the past four years now is I get a lot of work done. Uh-huh. Uh, when I get work, I get grassing, I get cupping, I get deep tissue massage every week. Um, so every Thursday, my grassing guy comes to the house. Pete does my grassing, my cupping, my stretching, and then every Sunday at the end of the week, I go see my man Big John who does all my deep tissue work. Okay. Uh, aside from that, you know, just get a lot of rest at home, a lot of sleep. Um, I'm up every morning at 4 a.m. doing cardio, so throughout the day, I'm able to get a bunch of rest in, a bunch of naps here and there before I head back to the gym um, at night to train. 4 a.m., dude? Why so early? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do cardio with my girlfriend, obviously, and we do training together, so she has to be to work at 6.30. Oh, okay. I get up at 4, we go do cardio, and then she goes to work, and I go to, well, go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're probably not up to like midnight every night, I'm guessing. Exactly. No. Oh. That's fine. Exactly. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. That was uh, who's the guy that uh, supposedly discovered the electricity? You know, Benjamin yeah. Franklin. Yeah, there you go. 
Man. So theoretically now we have about 11 months or so roughly till the next, to the next show. You know, what's your rough, you and Matt's rough game plan as far as like get back into a heavy off season when, and when do you think you might want to start prep? Uh, we've been talking a little bit on um, the next couple of weeks, kind of just let my body kind of do its thing over the next two weeks. Like I said, we'll start a full blown off season. Um, I would say February 1st um, yeah. and then prep. I mean, this year I prepped 21 weeks, wow. so five months. Um, we'll pretty much we'll gauge the off season. My goal is to get up to about 225 this off season, 230. Wow! Holy! Cr- you said 200 was your high before last year? Yeah. Well, this wow! Time. So 225, 230. Well, Ooh. I'm at, I'm at 200 right now. Yeah. Obviously, it's a lot of water and a lot of fluff, but um, we're doing cardio now to kind of bring everything back out, bring back, everything back down. Um, but, uh, yeah, we want to get to like 225 at minimum and then come on stage next year. Uh, Matt said 185. Wow. Give or take. Oh, I think I could see, oh, on stage at 185. So you probably weigh in at like 190 or more. Exactly. Yeah. So you're, exactly. you're in a good spot because geez, you're not going to max out on that. You probably will never max out on the, on the 212 class, which means you could keep getting better and better until you're all, you're decide you're all done with this stuff. Whereas geez, the majority of you guys com- you're competing against, they're done. They can't gain another ounce of muscle or else, you know, they'll just have to diet it off to make weight. Well, that's the one benefit I have is because I'm underweight already that I don't have to stress my body of coming down to make the weight and having a very small window to fill back up. Right. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just stressing the body. A lot of these guys are like cutting their food, doing more cardio and really stressing their body, particularly their legs with cardio. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again, they don't have that time to fill back out. Whereas I'm just kind of just coasting into the show eating as I need to, get on the scale fully dressed like you saw this year. Yeah. I'm just not worried about it. So I think that's one benefit that definitely helps me out. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, like I said, it's it's always exciting to see people that can Im- keep improving like that because we have a lot of, there's always been people in the sport that were great, but l- l- I'm going to use Dexter, for example. Uh, Dexter's the, he's one of the greatest of all time. There's no doubt. But Dexter hit a point probably, I don't know, probably about 12 years ago, maybe more, where he never got any bigger after that. He didn't need to, but he was maxed out. And, you know, it's always great to see him, but it was kind of like seeing the same thing over and over and over. With you and a couple other people in the sport, but not many, we do see something different every time, something bigger and better every time. And that's, it's called bodybuilding. So, you know, it's, it's very inspirational for the fans that follow you because they see you at your level, someone who you'd think, geez, this guy's been training so long. He's already such a high level there's no way he could get any better now but yet you do and you know talk to me about how hard it is to make improvements when you're already that that advanced you're already that good well that's the thing i don't see myself that way um Hmm. i'm never with my look i think it's probably why the whole you know me oh say i'm olympia champ or celebrating that because i don't think about it i'm already focusing on 2021 um and keeping that title um, so I'm never, I'm never happy about physique. I'm never happy until after the show's over. I look at pictures and videos from, from the stage. Mm. Um, so I'm always eager to make improvements. Again, I look at p- pictures and videos from this year. Again, there's four areas that I'm really focusing on: my chest, my back, my calves, and my hamstring to really bring those up. And um, honestly, I don't focus on making a, uh, getting a certain weight on stage, even though I said 185. The reason I say that is because as I improve those weak areas, my body just so happens to grow along with everything else. And I just so happen to kind of, kind of just grow overall. Um, I think once we make the improvements that need to be made, um, obviously I'm working with John Meadows as well. So we actually have a game plan uh, or a set program that he's sending, to, sending me in the next two weeks uh, for my off season to bring up those areas. Wow. So we're definitely looking to, again, be on stage much heavier and definitely improved. And again, the, the goal obviously is to, you know, there's a lot of great competitors coming up. Uh, we saw this year as well as Keon, who knows who's going to be in the mix next year as well. Oh, yeah. Any one-point decisions next year whatsoever. I want to come out there and just dominate and walk away the title easily. I don't want to have any one-point decisions ever again. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be, that would be something else because I, I'm sure Kamal is really – he wants that damn title back, guy. Yeah. Of course. Sure. <laughs> but they, they all want it. I mean, I was that same guy. Even, you know, even the, I'm sure the last base guy wants that title as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I, I can't, I can't you know, sleep with anybody, to be honest with you, but – one thing I did this year as well, you guys probably noticed it, is I don't post pictures on my, my, my Instagram of my, my progress. Um, I don't train anything less than a 3X t-shirt, baggy sweatpants. And I, I didn't focus on anybody. I didn't care what Kamal was looking like, Derek's like, anybody. I didn't really focus on that. 
Uh, I didn't want to take the attention away from myself, which is most important. And because of that, I think going into the show, a lot of people didn't really have me on the radar because mm-hmm. I wasn't posting photos, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's, that's what works best for me. Like, I don't like to be in the mix. I don't need the hype. I don't need the people talking about me. I just kind of like to show up to the show and just do what I do. Yeah. Um, that's kind of that's my thing. Dude, that's, you know, you're so 1985 with that mind, with that, with that approach, because it's, you know, I, I'm glad you do that in a sense, because so many times Instagram and the taking picture of yourself all pumped up in the certain corner of the gym where the sunlight's coming in, people get, you can take some crazy, crazy pictures. And I, I guarantee you every guy in that Olympia stage in the right lighting in the gym, you show that picture to somebody like, oh my God, nobody, there's nobody could beat that. I don't, that guy's going to win. He's going to win. Oh, Down to like the, the last place guy, because you're all you're all the best in the world. But you know, it doesn't always translate to the stage, as Giles likes to say. A lot of times you'll be at the show and they'll walk out and they go, huh. And then I go to my phone and I'm looking at a picture from last week, go, huh, what the <laughs> hell happened to this guy? Oh, it's because it's not just him now. He's standing up there with all these other guys, and stage lighting is brutal. It it is unforgiving, it's blasting you from all angles. It doesn't, it doesn't really help anybody, I don't think. And uh, yeah, yeah, you, you're you're so you're so unique in that aspect because this is like the social media me 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 age. You know, it's it's you're more I like Dorian Yates. <laughs> it, you know, fans want to see it, or the supporters want to see it, the, the sponsors want me, obviously want you to show more. But I've had a conversation with all my sponsors now too. Like, hey, that's not my style. Um, and if you're not on board with that, then you know, you know, so be it. But that's kind of how I I take the approach. And that's how I'm going to take the same approach this year as well. You guys are going to see. I'm actually training again on my T-shirts, my sweatpants, the same way. Uh, I may show a little bit in the beginning, but once prep starts at 20 weeks, where whatever Matt pulls the trigger, yeah, the T-shirts come back on, the sweatpants, the hoodies, the whole nine yards. You guys won't see anything until 2021 stage. Well, you have stage photos from the 2020 show. You did a couple photo shoots. Yeah. Those are great pictures to throw up all year long, I would think. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm doing now. I'm putting all the photos. Fo- I mean, a ton of photos, obviously, before the show that I couldn't put up. Um, so those are being posted now. The video with myself and Kai Green, we have photos of that that are being posted now as well. So we've got a lot of content to get me through the rest of the year. I saw that thing with Kai. Where, when were you? Uh, when did you meet up with Kai? So I've been I've known Kai for years. Uh, we right. actually train at the same gym now. Um, so we've been talking for almost the past year here and there. He'll, he'll come in, we'll talk for a little bit, and then one day I say, hey, do you mind just take a look at me and maybe go into some posing? And uh, we hooked up, we linked up, we made it happen, and I asked Jake D was to get it on film for my videographer at the time. Oh, wow. And uh, it was actually, a re- it came out a really good video. It was like an hour long. And obviously during that session, it was literally just, God just put me through the ringer for two hours. Hmm. Um, and obviously every every day after that, he just kind of checked on me. He would still text me randomly, to see how I'm feeling, see how I'm doing, see how I'm looking. Hmm. And uh, so I would say the last eight weeks of prep is when he and I kind of hooked up and kind of got things moving. Wow, because you know, I, I, I don't. I, that's surprising. I don't think most of us thought he was that involved in the actual sport anymore. He, he's still involved, obviously, but he's very hard to. He's a, he's a very busy man, very busy yeah. schedule, and yeah. I know he doesn't work with too many people like that. You know, so I was obviously honored the fact that he was able to take the time out of his schedule to meet with me and kind of help me out a little bit. So every time I've seen him after that, he would just kind of talk to me and see how you know I was showing some photos, get his feedback, obviously, so what what I need to work on and. You know, some of the poses on stage this year haven't been approved because of Kai. Uh, mainly my front row bicep has been approved because of him, my, my rear double bicep as well. Um, so everything he's taught me, I've kind of taken it all in and utilized it on stage. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to posing, he's one of the greatest of this generation. Absolutely. Yeah. How many yeah. shows were we at where everyone was like sleepy and then Kai would come out and everybody would be like, <gasps> <laughs> suddenly would you wake your ass up? <laughs> Every- <laughs> yeah. Man, um, any any uh, final words for the fans out there who did believe in you all along? Because I know there there has to be a loyal group of giant killer fans oh, who knew who knew all along you could do this. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't. You know, obviously I couldn't do this without my family, uh, girlfriend, my coaches. But obviously supporters all around the world. I hate to use the word fans personally. Uh, I call them all supporters because they're backing me and they support everything I'm doing. So I get a ton of messages, comments from people, and it, it, it's very motivating, very encouraging, especially during prep. Um, you know, obviously the last six weeks are the toughest for us. Um, but when I get mentioned from a young guy who's five foot, five one, who's saying, Hey, I'm looking up to you because of you, I'm chasing this pro card as well. It makes me want to train harder knowing that they're watching me, you know. So, to all those guys out there and girls who are, you know, being told they're too small, too short, they're not good enough, 
please continue to chase that dream. You know, you never know. I, I, I was one of those guys that was that was in your same position, same shoes. Yeah. And uh, I obviously continued to work hard, believed in myself, and, and, and finally made it all happen. And you can too. Yeah, that, that's it. That's great because so many, so many people, you know, this, I'm getting shorter and shorter as the years go by. Most of you guys out there, sorry, it's going to happen to you too. You're not going to get taller as you get older. I hate to break it to you, but there is, there's this bias in, in a lot of situations in life and even in bodybuilding where if someone's five foot, five, two, five, three as a male, people will say, you're too short. You know, don't even, you're not, you can't, you're never going to win anything. Sorry. Maybe you can like be a bantamweight and that'll be the, you know, like you've said, when you won the bantamweight nationals, People yeah. told you you were all that that was great, but you were all done. That was the end of the line for you. Uh, yeah. that, what was that? 2014? 2012. 2012. So eight years ago, they they told you you were all done. This is uh just hang it up. <laughs> yeah. It, it literally was after the show, which was crazy. I remember like it was yesterday, a guy came up to me, hey, congratulations, but your career is over. I'm like, you know, what does that mean? He's like, dude, there's never been a band of weight who's ever gone to the next level, won a pro show, done well. You should just give up if you're done. And um, again, I didn't, you know, I had two options. Obviously, believe believe that what they were saying and kind of quit, or just kind of just believe myself and keep going. And obviously, we know the decision I made. Um, there's always gonna be naysayers. I always say these naysayers are guys who couldn't do what I'm doing. Yeah, and I feel a little bit jealous about that. And um, but again, I just stay consistent, um, continue to love what I was doing, love the process, love the sport, and just believe in myself. And that's what got me here. Yeah, you know that that's the final thing I think people need to remember is believing in yourself because you have to believe in yourself when no one else does. Otherwise, you know, if you if you're relying on other people to boost you up all the time, you're going to get it. let down sooner or later because you know, in the end a lot most people are just out for themselves and they're, they're not going to support other people and they will try to discourage, especially like you said, if they weren't able to achieve and accomplish their goals in life, they get bitter and they get they get uh that they're they treat other people poorly because if they see someone like yourself going after their dreams, it makes yeah. them it, it gets into them like ah, it makes them realize I didn't do everything, I didn't work as hard, I I gave up on my dreams, you know I'm gonna try to put this guy down. So man, you know you're 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 a great example, Sean, really great example. I appreciate it. Yeah, well I've taken up enough of your time. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Congratulations, that was one of the greatest. Uh, geez the greatest success stories I've ever seen on Olympia stage. Cause anyone who knows your story was watching you win and just was like overjoyed. It was like, wow, it was like a movie. It's like a movie. I love seeing that stuff. It's truly, it's like people ask me all the time, Hey, well, how did, what did that moment feel like? And honestly, if you're not in a position, you, it's truly something you can't put into words. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, relief, just knowing that all the years I put in all the naysayers or the doubters, the friends I've lost, it just, it was all worth it for that very moment. And um, that's something I'll never, I'll never forget. It's something I'll never regret. Awesome. All right. Well, 212 Olympia champion, Sean Clarita. Thank you so much. It's been great catching up. And everybody, thanks for watching this. We appreciate you guys watching these videos. Hit Sean up. Uh, I should say hit him up. Check out his social media. It's just Sean Clarita. Just your name, right? On Instagram. That's it. <laughs> you, got a, you got a YouTube channel yet? Yep, Sean Clarita as well. I have tons of content up there, so guys, check that out as well. Absolutely. Got some heavy lifting on there, I hope? Oh, of course. Okay, of course. well, you guys, watch that. Watch him train before you go to the gym, and it'll get you all amped up. I know I've seen you do some stuff on leg day that I'm like, man, I want to go train legs. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you so much, Sean, and congratulations again. Thank you. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.